Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Sandtown Community Association virtual meeting. Um, Donald, you want to open us up with prayer? Well, sure, Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to be here today. Heavenly Father, through all the tragedies, heartaches, and pains that we are experiencing in the world today, you still see fit for us to be here to have a concern of our community. Heavenly Father, as we move forward, grant us with the ability to hear, to understand, and to speak politely. In, in, in your name, we pray, Heavenly Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that. Welcome, everybody. Um, is Chief Jones or Chief Meadows on the call? Uh, Sergeant Gibbons is here for the police. Oh, OK. I see you. <laughs> Okay. And Deputy Chief Moses is here for the fire department. Oh, okay, wonderful. So um, whichever one want to go first, go ahead. Uh, Deputy Chief, you can go ahead and go first if you would like. That's fine with me. Okay, um, well, I just have not much to share of this go around, um, but we did uh, manage to, it's, we're going to be accepting a new uh, mini pumper at step for station three. Uh, this uh, particular piece of apparatus will assist us in um, uh, combating fires that uh, we typically have during the summertime along the railroads. And so this, uh, this will uh, enable us to be a bit more agile in responding to those type of fires. And then also to, to uh, serve as either a backup engine or, um, within that capacity in, in the event that one of our fire apparatus goes out. Um, we also were successful in getting um, the new um, cardiac um, uh, monitors for our rigs for, our, for each of our apparatus. So that uh, will assist us in getting, um, uh, providing better ALS service for our citizens that we serve. And so we're really excited about having that come on board. And um, that's all that I, I have right now for the meeting, unless anybody has any questions. Uh, Deputy Chief Moses, this is Harvey Davis. As a reminder, doesn't the outdoor burning ban start in May? Oh, that is correct. Yes, sir, you're absolutely correct. So beginning May 1st, uh, there's no outdoor burning permitted. So uh, just everybody to be aware of that too. And it will run through until about the beginning of October. Thank you. Wonderful, are there any more questions? All right, Nick. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. This is Sergeant Gibbons from the police department. Um, I just have the stats for the last uh, month or so for uh, the District 1 area. And the stats are going to be coming from April the 2nd to April the 29th. Uh, as a whole, the, the crime in District 1 is down 18%, which is wow. a great thing. It's, um, this time last year, crime is down 18%. The only crime that's really alarming that we have in District 1 are auto thefts. Um, they're slightly higher, uh, about 4% for the last couple of weeks for some strange reason. Uh, and we usually see a lot of auto thefts when it's usually cold and people are leaving their cars running or whatever. But some of those may be because of two, because they're um, those Kia boys, if, if anybody knows what I'm talking about, they're still stealing cars. And I'm not sure if any of these auto thefts are because of the Kia uh, vehicles that they're actually stealing now. But that's uh, that's the only crime that's really, that's up slightly in District 1. Um, also, uh, I think it's a concern of some of you guys for the Slate um, apartment complex that's over on uh, Sandtown or uh, Sand Bay Drive there, those apartment complexes. I went over today to talk to the property manager and um, I know it's not going to be good news to you guys, but they changed the property manager again as of yesterday morning. Um, so I, I'm not sure what we can do as far as the city is concerned, but I'm going to see if I can work with code enforcement and see if I can go behind the scenes and do a little digging to see um, the company that owns this apartment complex. They seem to change the property manager maybe every four or five months, but the lady that was there, uh, Josette, Josette Fryer was her name. She's not there anymore. They took her away from that property and put her up in Grayson somewhere. Uh, so all the work that she did 
uh, at the beginning of the project when she got there, that's sort of kind of now null and void. So they have to start all over again, which makes absolutely no sense to me. One of the biggest concerns about the apartment complex is the back gate that was uh, locked at one time. The, the gate, um, the chains had to be taken off the gate because of the fire department. Uh, the fire marshals, they had an issue with that because it has to be two egresses uh, to that apartment complex because of, si because of the size of the apartment complex. So I think there was a bit of concern about the, um, the rear gate on that apartment complex, which is on the back side of Boat Rock Road. Uh, they had to take the chains off the gate because of the fire marshals, uh, the orders from the fire marshals. It has to be two egresses in and out of the apartment complex because of the number of apartments that are actually on that complex. Um, I think that's basically all I have. Does anybody have any questions about anything? Hello, I do. Yes, go ahead, ma'am. Uh, you speaking about the Kias, and I was wondering, I know the other police jurisdictions have been handing out, I think it's a steering wheel lock. Yes, ma'am. Do you plan on doing that? The, the club, you're talking about the club to just add like extra security to your vehicles. No, ma'am, we have, we have uh, I don't think we really talked about that yet, but I know most of the kids, they're going back to the dealership or going back to the, uh, the person that sold you the car and they're doing an upgrade on the security system to upgrade the security system. And that's a new feature that Kia uh, came out with a couple of months. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am, you're welcome. Are the thefts by kids or, I mean, is it, is the Kia, this particular car easy to uh, steal? Yes, ma'am. What they're doing, they're using a regular USB cord, a, a cell phone charger. They're using, though, they're ripping the stern column off the bottom of the car. Like you sit in the car and when you push the push the start or you stick the key in the ignition, they're ripping the lower part of that off. And they're going on YouTube and YouTube social media is explaining step by step how to actually steal these cars. So they're taking the USB port, the USB cord that we charge our cell phones with in our cars. And that's why we explain to a lot of the citizens in the city, don't leave, I know it sounds crazy, but don't leave cell phone charges in your cars because that's what they're doing now. They're taking the cords and they're sticking them in the ignition and that actually starts the car. I, I know it's, cra it's crazy, but that's what they're doing. And, and they're out joyriding in the cars and uh, they, they crash the car or they, or they leave the car or, or they, um, they commit other crimes in other jurisdictions, not to mention South Fulton as well. And that's what they're actually doing. Oh my goodness. Oh my. Mm. Hello, this is, yes, I have a question. This is Sheila Head. I yes, stay at Mitchell Carlson Drive, and I am concerned about the apartment across from us on, on um, Boat Rock. Could you explain again what you said about that gate? Because that's okay. it open quite often. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so the gate was, okay, so I got with the apartment manager about a month or two ago, and um, she deemed it necessary to lock the, to put a actual chain and a padlock on the gate. So um, we didn't go to the fire department to ask them, was it okay? She just deemed it necessary because that was one way of securing the gate. Um to keep uh, the stragglers from coming in and out. That way you will only have one way in the complex. A medical emergency happened a couple of weeks ago. The fire department could not get on the property of the apartment complex. So they had to literally cut the lock off the gate. Um, so uh, when they got the apartment complex, they came back the next day or a couple of days later, the lock was back on the gate again. So they went to the apartment complex property manager and told her that it was not, um, it was it was against a, it was a violation of the city ordinance to actually have a padlock and a chain on the gate to secure the gate. There are locks that are uh, that they sell that the fire department can get keys to, but the apartment complex manager said that she would just leave the gate unsecured until they came up with a better solution. So the fire department deemed it necessary to have the apartment complex take the locks off of the gate because of the issue with the fire department not being able to uh, get inside the gate for a medical emergency that they had in the apartments. Oh, okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am, you're welcome. Any other questions for Sergeant Gibbons? 
Good afternoon. This is Juanita. I'm sorry I logged on uh, late because I was on another Zoom call. Good evening. Hey, Miss Juanita. How you doing? Hi, darling. I, I, I heard the tail end of what you're talking about. Uh, so what is the remedy that we're going to do for the apartment complex? Because I am one of the people that live on Boat Rock Road. Yes, ma'am. Um, so now, Ms. Wadida, I have to go back again with another team of folks, and we got to talk to a new apartment manager, a new apartment complex manager. There's a new manager as of today. Um, I briefly met her. I was in and out because I was trying to talk to the old manager, found out that she left on yesterday. Yesterday was the last day. Um, so I'm going to go back over there tomorrow to formally introduce myself to this new apartment complex manager and give her all the list of demands that the city uh, that we came up with to try to secure that apartment complex, the property and the gates. And we're basically we're starting over from scratch because the old apartment complex manager had, I believe she talked to Councilwoman Rowell and they were gonna set up a meeting to start having meetings or something this summer in the apartment complex to just uh, to, to like an icebreaker uh, to okay. get to everyone. But again, uh, the company that she works for deemed it necessary to move her to an, another, uh, another apartment complex uh, I reached out to her this afternoon and she didn't answer my call. So maybe something happened. I'm not sure what the reason was, but she's not there anymore. Um, what do you mean she as in, is that Josette? Yeah, Josette Fryer. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, you know, I want to encourage you, Terrence, because um, that back gate right there, you know, I, like I said, I don't even know why the complex must have two exits. I don't know. No well, one well, else the, does. The fire department, the fire marshal, uh, deems it necessary because of the size of the apartment complex. Okay, you this must have, be. Yes, ma'am. You have to have more than one way of egress because of the number of occupants you have on a property, and that's so, the problem we had initially with just locking that gate. Joe said, "Lock the gate," and we didn't uh, reach the. We didn't contact the fire department to get all the rules and figure out what was going on. So when the fire department saw the lock on the gate, they got with the apartment complex and told them that they could not put those locks on the gate uh, because yeah. it was a fire violation. Okay, so That's this the, must be the biggest apartment complex ever. Wow, I'm because not sure. it's the only one in the whole city that has two exits. Uh, that's, no, that's I don't think that's. I don't think that's the case, but. One of the things we did talk about, this is Councilwoman Rao. I did meet with Ms. Fryer, so I, it's unfortunate <laughs> that we do have to start this process over. I think we talked about a knock, a knock box. Yes, ma'am. Allow the fire department to get access. So we just have to go over that. And we really probably need to go beyond the property manager and talk with the property owner. Yes, ma'am. They are responsible for changing out, you know, the staffing at this um, site, but I'll get with you, Gippins, because I did go over there and meet with her, as you indicated. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, Ms. Uh, Rowell, you did meet with her on April 18. And I appreciate all of your efforts, Terrence, but I want to make sure that we try to do something. I apologize that we had to change over staffing, so now we're starting from scratch all over again. But it does affect everything that goes on on that end of Boat Rock Road when that gate is open, because what you have is you have visitors coming and going. You have people lined up and down the street. You probably have already seen from being the police that's stationed on that end, people lined up to go into the apartments. It doesn't have, really shouldn't have access to the apartment, but I appreciate your efforts, okay? Keep me posted on our progress. I thank you. And you too, uh, Ms. Catherine. Well, have there been any other incidences in that community since the last one? No, ma'am. There has not been any uh, any violent crimes in that in that uh, apartment complex. No, ma'am. Okay. If we want to keep it that way. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much, Officer uh, Sergeant Givens. Um, is there any other questions? Are there any other questions for him? We will go ahead and move. Thank you again. We will go ahead and move to our next presenter, um, Adam Parker. Uh, he is here to give us an update on the community that the um, that is over there by Publix, the Carter development. Adam, you're on. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, my name is Adam Parker, and I work for Carter. We are an Atlanta-based developer. 
Um, our office is in downtown Atlanta. I can get out to this project that I'm talking about in about 15 minutes. Um, our company is known for being the company that partnered with Georgia State University to redevelop the neighborhood around the former Brave Stadium. So in addition to that, we build a lot of mixed use communities around the country. We have projects in Florida, North Carolina, Georgia, Tennessee, and we've been working on this project in Sandtown for probably about two years. Uh, we went through a zoning modification process and we've been under construction out there for about the past year and we're getting close to leasing our first units. So I wanted to, I wasn't able to join last month. Um, so I wanted to come on here and give everyone an update of where we are with the project and then answer any questions that you have. So for what the project will be, I know we were just talking about uh, the Slate apartment project. We are smaller than that. Um, that project has about 350 apartments. Our project will have 300 apartments. Um, we are going to be opening our leasing office. We're on track right now to open our leasing office at the end of May. We are then on track to open our first residential building at the end of June. Now, there could be some addition of times. Those times could be faster. A lot of it depends on approvals, coordinating with the city, getting certificates of occupancy. But I can say with a pretty high degree of confidence that we'll have our first residents moving in to our project this summer. Um, our buildings will be turning over or delivering about once a month. Um, we have 10 individual buildings with apartments in them and we'll be delivering them about a month apart. So we're gonna be delivering them starting this spring and then we're gonna ideally have our last building be delivered the first quarter of next year. Um, the other component, oh, and then I'll actually, so related to the residential component with the conversation around property management at other apartments, uh, we are using a property management firm called Rangewater Real Estate. I would encourage you all to look them up. They're a national firm. They're currently managing thousands of apartment units for us across the United States. Our property manager has already started work. Um, they have started working on our project before the first tenants moved in because the goal that comes with that is to get them to understand the property, know everything about it, be knowledgeable. Um, so then once everything opens up, they're an ideal property manager. So again, our property management firm is called Range Water. And then lastly, the second part of this project is this is going to be a mixed use project. So we are going to be anchored by our apartment project, but we do have three out parcels along two along Campbellton and then one along Riverside. Those out parcels have plans to be developed into commercial development. And every single conversation that I've had with um, folks in the community, elected officials, neighbors, um, there are even folks on this call that have sent me emails. We hear you loud and clear on a desire for sit down restaurants. Um, can I guarantee that? No. Do I want that? Yes. Um, we want the best possible tenants at this project because it will only make our property better. So for reference, we don't want to put uh, a, probably the type of tenants that you all don't want are also the type of tenants that we do, do not want. Our company has made a significant investment in this project and the type of commercial tenants that we're looking to place within this project are tenants that we want to be accretive and would be reflective of the high end project that we are building on site. Right now, those commercial out parcels, as you see, they have our construction trailer on them. Uh, the commercial out parcel across from the Republics on Riverside has a huge pile of dirt on it. So as the project continues to be built and as the dirt is relocated elsewhere on site, as the construction trailer can then go away, then those commercial properties will then have more concrete plans associated with them. But at this time, our plans for those commercial lot parcels are to be a commercial development that is accretive to our project overall. And as we've been talking with prospective uh, groups that would take those out parcels, we hear you loud and clear on a desire for sit down restaurants and we're working towards that. 
So I will pause there um, and I'm happy to answer any questions anyone may have. Are there any questions of Adam? Ms. Davis, I have a question. Sure. This is Ms. Warren. Sure. Um, thank you for this. So as you know, Westlake High School is um, down the street on very near to that apartment complex. Mm -hmm. And we've just tightened our residency verifications around Westlake. Um, is the property management thinking of doing anything so people will not erroneously use the addresses over there to get into Westlake? What we found with some of our rental properties were people were duplicating leases, changing the numbers on them, and kids who were saying they lived in the apartment complex did not. That's just a thought for you guys to think about because those apartments are right there. Okay. Um, and so um, I can leave my email there so that I can get you in contact with our operational planning. But that's a concern of mine for um, just the, the safety of other kids, but also making sure we know where every kid lives, a viable address. So that's just something that I would um, put on your radar. No, absolutely. And um, Ms. Warren, thank you for that. We actually, to give you an idea, we invest in a more or less fraud software um, for every applicant that comes in that we run it through multiple layers to avoid something in that instance, but also to avoid you know, fraudulent pay stubs, um, fraudulent credit history. That's something that we're always aware of. Um, I did just drop my email um, in the chat for everyone. If there are follow-up items such as that, uh, feel free to shoot me a note on that. But thank you for that. I have one more question. What's the price point of these um, apartments? So they, well, I'll start with the breakdown. So when you were talking about families and, and schools, 40% um, of the apartments are one bedrooms, 50% are two bedrooms, and only 10% are three bedrooms. So we don't anticipate a lot of a lot of families living in these apartments. But right now, the way we've priced this has been comparing to existing apartments in the area. Um, so, for instance, the Emblem Riverside that recently opened over on Riverside in Douglasville, we have pretty comparable prices to that. So that would be a one bedroom starting $1,400, $1,500, but then our biggest three bedrooms going up over $2,000. Any other questions? Well, we heard um, a root. Oh, go ahead. Who's that? Um, Shay Steed. I, I had a I had my hand raised, so I just wanted I'm to ask. I'm sorry, I didn't see you. Um, you mentioned about the out, out parcels, and I might have missed it. I apologize, but um, did you give a timeline when they will be built? I mean, how long will it be? Um, I'm just concerned that they, you know, it will be years from now before the out parcel. I'm hoping it won't be. I'm sure it won't be. But be yeah, no, it, it, right. Yeah, it would it it would not be because our our project needs the commercial component to succeed. Um, right now, the out parcels are literally being used for a construction trailer and 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 lay down. Um, once that's done and the parcels are have utilities delivered to them and we're no longer utilizing them, then the conversations and the research and the tenant conversations will become more concrete. I would expect, and I'm, I'm happy to come back as often as I need to to give updates on this, but we have already started having soft conversations with prospective retailers, but we can't deliver the pads to them yet because we're still under construction. So it's not our intention to have these pads sit vacant forever. If I had to give an estimate on timelines, uh, just because we're not gonna be delivering our final buildings until the first part of next year, mm -hmm. you, the earliest construction would be starting on them would be next year. Next year, okay. So even if there's say there's an economic downturn, you don't foresee that affecting them? Oh, it could, yeah, it could mm -hmm. definitely affect them. I mean, for, okay. for reference, this project that when we financed it, that's this project, uh, we closed our loan on this in January of 2022. Um, and interest rates were entirely different. Construction pricing was entirely different. But you can talk to different developers and people in construction. I'm a believer that 
that that pricing has started to stabilize. Um, I, we all saw the news yesterday after the Fred, Fed increased rates again. I certainly hope we'll now start to bring them back down. Um, so yeah, of of course, uh, you know, third party events and and and, and economic downturns could impact it, but I can tell you right now that that our investors are expecting and planning on um, a commercial component being added to this project, and I am. All right, thank you for your transparency. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, Miss Miss Davis I, and Mr. Park, I have a question. I'm not sure how to put my little artificial hand up, but I just wanted to ask if the commercial components are going to be governed by the Sandtown overlay. Yes, um, they are. And on top of that, during our zoning modification process, and Dr. Rao can speak to this in greater detail as well, um, there were conditions put on it. For instance, drive-throughs are not allowed. Um, we are capped at the number of buildings that we can put along Campbellton Road. Um, so yes, the site is governed by the Sandtown overlay as well as the conditions that were implemented on them as a part of our zoning modification. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Adam? Well, Adam, I heard a rumor that um, there is a waiting list for residents that are interested in this community. Is it is that correct? That's yeah, so uh, we currently have seven projects under construction across the United States, and this project has had more inquiries for leasing than any other project that we have in Florida, North Carolina, or Georgia. Um, we've had over 800 people fill out a request for information. Um, and look, some of those just may be people that are curious. Like, you know, I can tell you right now, one of those was me when I was trying to test out the website to make sure it worked. But <laughs> yeah, we have received very strong interest and that does not surprise me. And I'm sure it doesn't surprise anyone else on this call, it's a great neighborhood. We are building a really fine product. It's gonna be the nicest apartment community in the city of South Fulton. And going back to the commercial component question, this just really helps our recruitment of high quality commercial tenants because we're able to say, hey, there's really strong interest. We're gonna lease up quickly. You're gonna have all these residents living right behind you. It's guaranteed customers. So um, I'm very, I'm very excited about this project. Um, and yes, there is a, I don't know if it's a waiting list because no one's filled out an application yet, but there has been a huge amount of interest on our online forums. Well, that's exciting um, um, because <clears throat> the foot traffic um, that will, you know, the retailers in the area will definitely benefit from all the foot, tra foot traffic and um, to support it. And I know that a lot of times, you know, some people frown on um, apartment living. Uh, I've lived in apartments, I've been married 42 years. So uh, I've lived in apartments, I've lived in townhomes, own townhomes, homes, and that kind of thing. You know, you live in different spaces based on what's going on in your life. But I do know that, um, you know, we try to have to balance all of this. Um, you know, we want commercial, but we gotta have people to support the commercial. We want sit down res uh, restaurants, we gotta have people to support those sit down restaurants because I'm not one that's gonna go eat out at a restaurant every night, but there are some people some age group, some demographics that will go out and eat three nights a week or four nights a week or what have you. So we're trying to balance the type of um, residential that we bring in the community so that at the end of the day, we will all benefit from being able to have to dine in our neighborhood when we want to and that kind of thing. So I'm kind of excited about it. And I look forward to seeing what will come in those three parcels. Well, thank you, Adam. And if there are no other questions, I just uh, this is this is Harvey. I just wanted ahead. to say, Adam, I just wanted to thank you and Carter for continuing to work with our community association and residents uh, for a win-win. And 
as you can imagine, I'm very excited about this. Well, thank you, Harvey. And I'm like I said, y'all let I wasn't able to come last month, but I'm happy to come and check in, you know, after we've done some leasing, let y'all know how leasing's going. Um, I put my contact info in, in the chat. Um, Debbie, you have my contact information. Uh, happy to keep y'all posted and I appreciate those comments. Uh, one, someone just texted me, Adam, what's the deal with the security at the community? Will they have 24-hour security or how is that going to be handled? So the apartment complex will be gated. Um, there will be, so if you want to drive in and, you know, walk into the leasing office, anyone can do that during working hours. But then after hours, it's a gated community. So you have to have a passcode or a key card to get in. Um, so it will be gated. There will be card access. But during the day, during business hours, if you wanted to go in and rent an apartment, you can obviously drive in. Um, so, yes, it will be there will be gates. There will be security. Um, you know, there will be security cameras. Um, so, yes. Do we have any other questions? This Thank is Councilwoman Morrell. Ms. Adam, can you talk a little bit about some of the amenities? Um, people probably have forgotten. Again, uh, we, we're almost two years from when we started this conversation, just to remind people. Yeah, of course. So the thing that we've done on all of our projects and is going to be no different here is that we are going to have what we have upgraded our pool and it is going to be a resort style pool and resort style fitness center. So when we were designing this, one thing that our team did is we went out and we looked at all the apartments in and around the city of South Fulton, as well as Douglasville. And our goal was to deliver the nicest product in the area that would be above and beyond everything else that people would be deciding to live amongst when they're going apartment shopping. So this apartment community will have the biggest gym, will have the biggest pool, will have the biggest club room. We'll have grills and grilling stations and green space scattered throughout the project. Now, this won't be you know, open to the public, right? It's going to be intended for tenants, but the amenities that are going to come with it within the, I'll call it like the Western market of Atlanta, they're going to be far and away the nicest amenities um, in the area. Does anyone else have any other comments, questions? I noticed, um, and maybe I, I drive over that way and I'm peeking all the time. Is there, are there garages or storage units, storages um, places on the backside? So we have garages throughout the property. So we have 10 individual garage buildings. And one thing that we found in our other apartment communities across the Southeast is that some people will rent those not to park their car, but they may just rent them for general storage. Um, but we also found that people that, you know, maybe driving really nice cars don't wanna park their cars out in the elements and they'd rather have something covered. So we have 10 individual garages that each park three, have the ability to park three cars in them. So when you have smaller buildings like that, those smaller buildings are all garages. Okay. That's what I, I thought I saw that, but I wasn't sure. That's pretty cool. So you can use them for a garage, uh, for your car or storage. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other questions from anyone? Any other comments? Again, Adam, thank you for joining us. Yeah. And uh, we look forward to that opening of the project. It's been a long time coming. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Uh, Ms. Warren, you're up. Yes, ma'am. Thank you guys for having me. Um, Mr. Davis has been so kind to agree to start to share our capital plan product project. Um, for the next couple of years. So I wanted to share, start with this because at my last community meeting, which was at Cliftondale Elementary School, we had about 300 parents there and we went over this. So I wanna very quickly go over it with you guys. Um, our capital plan, this is for 20, um, oh God, 2027. Um, a lot of people will say that's so far away when planning to build schools and upgrading schools, it really isn't. Um, so I'm gonna hop over to, um, our first on page five, 
uh, Mr. Davis, is, and I want you guys to kind of look at how we look at capital plan. So of course we know the building of new schools and we know that there is a huge uptick in um, construct and development down here and um, people moving down here, but also knowing that with capital planning, we also do um, devices, we do IT upgrades and we do regular maintenance projects that are upgrading our facilities. Um, and so I wanted to say that because I'm gonna start with this and that in Fulton County Schools, we've given every child in, um, a computer. Um, and so one of the things that we're running into is that just like young people, especially our middle schoolers, they are not taking care of their computers. Um, and so we have been having some really um, different conversations about making sure um, using taxpayers' money to making sure that we can recover all of them, making sure that we are um, leveling, levying fines when they are coming back broken. Um, so that we can make sure that we are using taxpayers' money to the best of our abilities. Um, in addition, if you go to the next slide, on this five-year plan, um, infrastructure and security, as we saw yesterday with the devastating um, mass shooting in Atlanta, um, the district is doing a lot of things around our security to continually upgrade. Every campus of ours has flock cameras, so we can see um, who's coming into our campuses, we can run their plates, we can put trespassers in our system, and so when they come on campus or attempt to come on campus, um, we can flag them for it. Um, also, we are looking at, when you look at this, so we look at data management, firewall, these are just some of the things that you, see, that you don't see, but are super important for um, our kids, protecting our kids and protecting our schools and protecting our uh, teachers. If you go to the next slide, we are also look at, um, looking at some of the instructional pieces. Um, of course, we've all went to more digital um, you know, resources, um, but we're also using a lot of our money around other things. So you talk about our single sign um, platform where every, every kid, every parent can go in and look at their child's grades learning management systems, but it keeps, an, it's an up to, upkeep. So making sure that we have those and those things are, those are super important. If you go to the next one, ongoing projects, this is something that's really important. So we still have to close out 2022 um, and we have a couple of schools that will be rebuilt. So we have Conley Hills, which will be a total rebuild. Middle College will be um, a rebuild. And we have Tri-Cities and Barnwell, that's not in our area. But if you look at Capital Plan 2027, we have Camp Creek Middle School, SL Lewis, and K-8 um, Palmetto, um, the new Palmetto School. And then also looking at some of the major renovations and things. Hold on a second, Shh, I'm on a call, okay? Sorry guys, I'm at a softball game with my child. Um, and then if you also look, we use a lot of this money for roofing, for audiovisual. Um, and media center upgrades. And we also look at it for um, track and turf properties. So we'll be putting turf onto, uh, upgrading the turf in some of our schools and some of the things that go with that. <clears throat> if you can go to the next slide. These are some of our timelines. These are contingent. One of the things that we are running into is um, the labor and the cost. So we are doing them in waves. These waves we constructed um, to try to, so for example, if Randolph is getting a new roof, then are there other things at Randolph that we can get done and we can get um, more bang for our buck with the vendor? So these are different waves that you'll see right there. Um, one of the things I wanna point out is that car, re car um, key readers, LED lights. These are just some of the things that when you see, you're like, oh, wow, I didn't realize it cost that much. Or wow, I didn't realize you guys were working on that just so you can see that. You can go to the next slide. If you look at Can't Wave 2, you see a lot of different things, LED lights, IT, major renovations. You go to Wave 3. You see all of our practice turfs. Um, you see the spring, summer. There is one addition here and that Creekside, because it's one of our oldest buildings, um, we are going to have to replace their track. 
We are trying to work on what that looks like because of how Creekside is built. Um, so just some of the things that we have with that. Um, and if you keep going to the next one, our K-8 schools. So Con Camp Creek Middle School will start to look at the design in September. Conley Hills, um, we've gone to procurement. Um, I'll go down to Palmetto. We are starting the design in 2024. Um, McLaren is going through the same procurement. And SL Lewis, their design is going through June 2023. Um, one of the things that you'll realize, and a lot of people uh, may or may not, is that the area over by Camp Creek Middle School, the replacement, the brand new building, um, is getting is even more becoming even more populous with people moving in. So one of the things that we've been very mindful to do is to make sure that we build this at the same at the bigger capacity than what Camp Creek currently is. Um, so there's a lot of decisions to be made around what it'll look like um, and how we want it to look. I personally like the new building at Global Impact. If you've been down there, the newest high school, it looks very. Um, digitally pleasing and so we're working on making sure that as we think about the design we kind of go out of the box and um, I personally want it to look a little different than some of our other middle schools just because this will be our newest middle school over here. If you can go to the next one. Um, we will be buying buses and these buses will have um, air condition on them so 55 will be 20, 20 down north and south will be split evenly eight million dollars. Um, play structures, I'll give you an example. Many PTAs throughout the years have um, built playgrounds for some of our communities. Um, previous boards have, have made the PTAs or whoever built them really upkeep them. We've made the decision that Fulton County Schools will update all of them. Um, and so some of that is in there. Um, we're replacing police radios, car dealer, um, car reader, camera upgrades, um, defibrillator replacements. And this is really important, especially the camera upgrades, because if you've ever been to our safety and security building up north, we can see every inch of a school minus the bathrooms um, at our command center. So each year, each capital plan, each year we update them, but each capital plan, we are getting new software for them to make sure the picture is as clear as possible. Um, and so that's really important. Will you go to the next slide, please? Um, these are cash flow projects. These are just numbers, and we can put the link right here. Everything is on our website. But I want to keep you, if you go to go to the next slide, if you don't mind, and go to the next slide. If you can go to the next slide, I'm sorry. Is that it? That's the last one? OK. Um, one of the things right now we are using, so people will say, you know, building new schools, they are very expensive just for some of the, um, to keep in mind pricing, when we built um, Langston Hughes High School in 2010-ish, it was $75 million for the land and for the building. Right now, we are looking at almost double the prices. And so how we finance schools is through our SPLOS, our penny campaign. So a penny that every, uh, people who come into Fulton County and buy something, um, and we are not borrowing any money. One of the things that I have asked the superintendent, um, because some of the timelines are a little bit too out for me to see if we can speed them up. Um, but we really are contingent on the materials, the workforce. It's just, it, in the last two to three years, things have become very difficult to get off the ground with just supplies, um, labor. And so we're just trying to keep that into context as we're building these out and planning for them and making sure that we're trying to be as cost effective as possible. Um, that was a lot to digest. I'm gonna pause to see if anybody has any other questions about that piece, about our capital plan project. Hey, Ms. Warren, this is, yes, this sir. is Ed. Uh, hey, great Ed. presentation. Um, what, I, what I wanted to ask was, when you talk about capital planning and construction and things of that nature, I just have a question on, um, I know some of us have driven by we kind of seen the dumpsters outside the uh, the old Westlake building. Yes. Is there any concrete plans for that? What, what is the plan for that? Something's going on. Absolutely. So one of the things that I've asked the superintendent, because honestly, it's an eyesore, um, is to go through, clean it up. We cannot. So it had asbestos in it um, and movie theaters had been renting it. 
And so one of the things I've asked the superintendent to, superintendent to do is number one, is to go through and let, let's get an assessment of the building. Um, and honestly, my idea, and I've spoken to the superintendent about it, and once this becomes final, we or as we go through the process, we bring the community in. Um, I'm really interested in us taking that property and making a professional learning center for the South Side. Um, and so it would be something where we could get all of our teachers together in one spot because we have so many employees um, and we could use that space. Um, but it is on my list to figure out what is next. I don't like that it's vacant. Um, we know that we are in a housing cr uh, crisis. We've had to run people out of there who have been trying to, um, homeless people who've tried to be in there. And so as we are, I mean, I think we've already taken out like 15 um, big dumpsters of stuff. So as we continue to go through and assess it, um, I'll be bringing you guys updates so that we can bring the community in. Um, there have been people who've expressed interest in like, hey, can, can we sell it to a certain entity? It's so close to our kids. Um, I just don't think that's feasible. Um, and instead, I think it would be better usage for us to keep the property um, and to go from that. So we, we are moving forward with plans to hopefully make that a um, professional learning center um, just with its proximity to Westlake and the parking that we use for the football games and some of our athletic events over there. Thank you. And I also want to add, um, it's not in the SPLAS, um, the capital plan presentation, but one of the things we decided at the last board meeting is that all of our schools are getting an upgrade on their scoreboards, which doesn't feel like a huge deal. Um, and I hate that it wasn't on there, or maybe I missed it. It's about $200,000 per scoreboard. Um, and so our schools have been working through um, the standard scoreboard they would want. Some of our schools have expressed the want to be able to have video playing on their scoreboard and different things. So some of our schools have opted to do an upgrade to it. Um, but that is something um, that we are working on. Just to caution parents, it will not happen before the new football season. Um, because it is a procurement process and we have to go through that. But all of our scoreboards and all of our South Fulton schools are getting um, redone. And that's in addition to the turf. Um, and also it brings me to another point, um, Westlake High School, they are getting their weight room completely redone. So through the summer, um, right now they have new flooring that's coming in, but it's getting painted. And in addition to new weights um, that will be in there. So just lots of things happening in bits and pieces um, as we continue to make sure that our schools um, are in the best physical shape. Councilman Rowell, you have your hand up. Yes, I just had a quick question. Um, Ms. Warren, you spoke about uh, it being a professional learning center, potentially at Westlake High School. Would that replace the one at Banneker High School? or what is your thought around that? And um, so, I wanted to thank you also for the, the landscaping um, that's been installed at Westlake High School. I'm there, you know, a few times <laughs> a week and, and it looks right. really good. Absolutely. Um, thank you for bringing that up. So one of the things that we are suggesting in our budget is giving more money to operations. Notoriously, Fulton County Schools has operated upon schools do their own maintenance around the upkeep it's just not feasible for, for schools to do it. Um, and so um, Mr. Davis has been really uh, emailing us, making sure that the lines are painted white on the parking lots. Those simple things give us a lot of bang for our buck. So we have suggested for us to give more money to operations instead of running it bare bones and you know trying to find the money. Um, number two, the center down at... Um, by Banneker, it has our college and career center. And so while it's a professional learning space, it's only really one space for professional learning. So it's not really built like a full professional learning space with various breakout rooms and those things. Um, so we would likely, I don't know what the plans are, but we would likely allow the college and career center to take over more of that building um, and to go from there. Um, but I, I do think, you know, just with, you, can, you can't get enough land. Um, it's just something that we've been in talks with and just the old Westlake, the building itself 
it's just not in the condition for us to have kids in it. And so we're thinking about it, we're cleaning it out. And um, as I get more updates, I'll be sure to share with you guys. But um, I have been on them about making sure that Fulton County Police patrols it, um, making sure that it's it stays locked up, but any access points that have been compromised, because the worst thing that you can do is have um, people, unhoused people, in that space. Um, so we, it, we, we got them out about a year and a half ago, but um, you know, just any open property that's sitting there, we wanna make sure that we're using it to the best of our ability. Mr. Lee, you have your hand up. Yeah, one more question since we're still talking about capital plan. And I know it's, it's been a topic with the growth in the area. We just had a presentation on new apartments. We see all the new developments, it's probably the hot topic. But I didn't really see a plan for that. Do you envision, and it may not be by 2027, but do you envision a new high school on the South Side in the, in the immediate future? Absolutely. Um, one of the things, so Global Impact was just built last year. We opened it last year. Um, and it has space for about 900 kids. They sit right now at about 400 as they add a grade each year. Um, I will say this, is that we are starting to look at Capital Plan 2032. Um, and that sounds like a ways away, but when you have to secure land, when you have to do a lot of different things, it's not. So we are fully, um, we fully know that this is where the growth is happening and we'll have to build more. Um, one of the things that um, I tell people this all the time, that in the, two, the, 20, the 2000s, I'm sorry, when North Fulton was being built um, and they built all these schools and they built all these, um, when they built all these schools to accommodate it, now this is our turn on the South side. And as things are being built and we're looking at these um, hot bubble areas, um, the first part of course was verification and make sure these are actually Fulton County residents and our schools, um, then redistricting. Now the conversation is going, to, is around where can we build at? What are the hot spots? Um, I will say this at Tri-Cities and at Banneker, um, they sit at about 1,400 and 1,500 right now. Um, and remember that they were built for about 1,900 to 2,000 ish. Um, you will see trailers there next year. There will be trailers there. Um, and one of the reasons you will see trailers there is because we have a lot of programs in Fulton County schools, whether it's kids you know can come on the weekend and get food or our magnet program um, and it just helps us as we continue to look for places where we see our high growth of where to build new high schools a new I'm sorry and I wouldn't even say high schools new school I hope that answers your question Any other questions yeah, about our yeah, capital? Yeah, thank you, thank you. Okay. Um, I will, one, one of the questions that we had um, at Cliftondale Elementary School was kind of what you were just talking about, the growth and planning for it and what does it look like? And they were talking about sit down restaurants um, and Councilwoman um, Gums actually came and talked about some of the plans with the roads. Um, and so, as we continue to work hand in hand with the city of South Fulton, um, and I can reach out to Dr. Rao or Carmelie or um, Councilwoman Gums, um, uh, Councilwoman, uh, Councilman Sebastian. Um, one of the things that she talked about was the planning around the roads and some of the things that they were doing for it. Um, so I think that as what she said was really enlightening. Um, and so, I don't have the presentation in front of me and I don't want to misspeak, but there's a lot being planned around the upgrade of some of our roads and it, where there are schools um, in concentration. Ms. Warren, I have a, a quick question. Uh, this yes, is Cheryl Flowers. Um, you were showing the slides and uh, most of them, the first one or two dealt with um, replacements and renovations. I only saw one completely new school, and I think that was Palmetto or something like that, and that was on the second or the third slide. And you're correct, um, in other areas when there was this rapid growth, 
schools were really growing, going up um, pretty quickly. And so I guess my question is, um, you said down the line, another high school in South County, but has there been any consideration for a middle school uh, in the West Ups, Cascade Palmetto area near Walden Park? Right now that area, if I'm not mistaken, they go to middle school, to the middle school is down there near Langston Hughes. Yes, what about something on the other side for the growth that's going on the West Doves and all the growth on the other side of Cascade Palmetto going towards the river. There needs to be, in, in my opinion, another middle school. Has there been any consideration for that? Yes, ma'am. As we think about 2032, one of the um, directives that I gave the superintendent was looking at those hot spots is not only looking for where is open land, but looking at all of those options. So elementary, middle, and high school. Because honestly, our high schools, other than um, a Randolph, Randolph has built a little smaller. Our high, our middle, I'm sorry, our elementary schools can hold about 850, right? Cliftondale is at about six, 700, right at 700. Um, our Renaissance Middle School, even though we rezoned them, they were at about 1200. Renaissance was our biggest high school. Um, almost in the county. I think Webb Bridge might have been right there with it up north. And so knowing that we've redistricted, yes, ma'am, I've given them directions to look at that. Um, and also keeping in mind as we go through, as these new schools are built, staying very tight to making sure that we're verifying at the school level and at the district level that the kids in our schools are, are kids who live in Fulton County schools. Um, so it is on their radar. Yes, ma'am. Well, and, and, and I'm just going to say this in, in our hush. I do appreciate yeah. Eric because you are certainly a good school board member. We're so glad to have you. Yes, ma'am. Um, but knowing that all this growth is coming, uh, I think it would be very prudent to identify land and purchase it now because if you wait, it's going to get more expensive. Um, and then the, the last thing I want to say is um, in some areas, schools don't need to be so large. And that's mm -hmm. something else that I wish that the school board would pay attention to. Um, when, when we look at communities coming together, sometimes if the communities are so far apart, uh, they, there's conflict. In, in some mm -hmm. other areas, high schools are only like two or three miles apart. But when you look at the distance from Tri-Cities to a Westlake or Tri-Cities to a Banneker, you've got so many different communities which can lead to so much more conflict and I, I just think that um, these big schools are not always ideal in certain settings. Yes ma'am and I, I certainly agree with that. Global was only built for about 900 the high school and that's a lot smaller but I do agree with you. Um, when you look at some of the issues that we saw when Langston was built it was right. because we were, we were pulling kids who were 15, 20 minutes down the road to go to Langston. Um, as we've corrected a lot of these issues with going back and redistricting, but also um, having leadership in there, it has been a game changer for many of our schools. We had kids as far away as Old National going to school at Creekside. That's a 20 minute ride every day. They got to go yeah. up 85. It makes no sense. It so does. when you start to peel back some of the layers of some of the previous redistrictings. And that's not to say that they weren't done in good faith. They were. Um, when you build a school, you don't want to build a school that's built for 2,000 and only have 1,000 kids. Um, you want to fill the school for tax um, payers, um, for good use of taxpayers' funds. However, I do agree that we have to look at that. Um, as we go into next year, and I'll just use Renaissance Middle School as an example, because it was our largest middle school, is that you are going to see some really big changes because the kids who go there now are the kids who live in the immediate area. Um, and I can't stress that enough because like you said, when you're bringing people from all over different parts, it just leads to different things. Um, and some of it's age, but a lot of it is things that are happening in the communities. Um, and so while this redistricting um, process was pretty painful, 
it was absolutely needed um, for our schools. And I do agree, smaller schools, they've looked at the idea of making Camp Creek a little bit smaller. Our only pushback is there's a lot of development over there. Um, and so if you make it smaller, you're gonna have to build another school pretty quickly. Um, so we're just trying to explore some of the things. SL Lewis is a pretty small um, elementary school. Um, and so when that one is built, we'll have to make some conversations about, you know, what does it look like and to go from there. But I completely agree with you. Um, I think that's very important for community schools to stay as community schools. Well, I, I, I appreciate you looking into that because I, I have worked in schools and middle school is a tough um, yes, ma'am. Yeah, those are those are tough years in middle school. So yes, um, we just need. Uh, uh, I would appreciate looking at a middle school in that um, West Ups Cascade Palmetto Road area. Yes, ma'am. And there's a lot of growth happening down there. Right. And one of the things that we have seen is with the growth. Whenever we build a new school, um, we have to hold really tight to residency because we seem to get people from all over who want to come for the new school experience. So I, I completely agree with that. Thank you. Marilyn, you have your hand up. Let's speak on. One of the reasons that um, A. Philip Randolph may have been as small as it was, A. Philip Randolph was supposed to be the last school built on the South Side. Um, the school that was over there on Danforth closed and everybody was supposed to come over here because after you got to Randolph, there was nothing, nothing down Camp Creek, none of the um, uh, 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 buildings or apartments or communities were over here. That was it. And the money was supposed to go to the North side and then Bill Campbell had this article done in the newspaper that talked about once you got off of 20 down there, basically at, um, at, at 20 in Fulton Industrial, we didn't have any gas stations, grocery stores, none of that stuff out here. And once that article went in the newspaper, people started looking and then they started to come. So like I said, Randolph was supposed to be the very last school. And when my daughter went in there for kindergarten, the school was basically empty. And, oh, so wow. just, wow. and, it, and Brenda Thompson, when she was here, was always talking about neighborhood schools, schools where your kids could just walk to, and that was one of her pet peeves. So, um, and then all of a sudden, after that article in the paper, people start looking and developers and so forth started coming and, and, and grows. So that might be why Randolph is so small. Yes, ma'am. And thank you for that historical perspective. And I will say this, um, you know, sometimes we get a lot of people who say things that aren't so positive about our schools, our schools are in demand. Um, and if I look at all of the high schools, all of our high schools are, none of our high schools are empty. They're getting new students weekly who are coming in from different areas, moving into the area, um, our elementary schools, moving into the area. So one of the things that, you know, we want to do is I'm, I'm always driving around and looking at the new developments. I know we get a list, but I, it really helps me to see them. Um, and one of the things that I suspect um, is that even people are moving here for the schools. Um, and we've heard this repeatedly, whether it's they want their child to be a pathway completer, they want them to do the magnet program, they want them to get a, um, a degree from down at Langston, they want them to do agriculture because it's the number one industry in Georgia. People are moving into our schools. And so one of the things that I've tried to really take into account is what the school that we have and how can we keep making them better um, so that we can make sure that people keep moving into them. Does anyone else have any other questions for Ms. Warren? Mm -hmm. Well, I certainly want to echo what Cheryl has said about you, uh, Ms. Warren. We really do appreciate all the work that you were doing to. Um, improve our schools and meet the challenges of the growth that we are experiencing in the area. And to me, it's a good thing. Um, yes, ma'am. <laughs> um, schools are, as one principal said many years ago, is the cornerstone to a good community. 
And so if we can keep the schools performing, they will in, in it will invite other people to live in our community, which will invite people to buy homes in our community or to rent homes in our community. Um, if we will have a more stable community, we will be able to support all of the commercial development that is in the community and we will attract, just continue to, to attract um, positive things in the community. And to me, that's called community wealth. And that is something that we have to continue to build upon so that we're not going to stay young forever. We're going to have to pass the torch on to the next generation of residents um, that will be in the community. And we certainly want to give them a leg on up so that they can build their wealth for their families as well. So all of this is a lot of hard work, but it is exciting to me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Hey, can I add one more thing? Sure. Go ahead. Again, school will be out. Ms. Warren, you're going in and out. We can't hear, understand what you're saying. Free, free um, summer camps. There are things for kids to do. Um, and so I just want to implore parents, if you are in a situation where you're like, you know, I don't know what my child's going to do this summer, please reach out to the school, um, ask them what they have, because we do know that I don't mind on in trouble and we want to make sure all of our young people are doing something positive great well thank you so much Ms. Warren for that report and Councilman Rao you're next thank you um there's a lot going on as you can see in the city not just on the school front but I want to offer a couple quick updates um one of the things that we've been talking about is restaurants Gauthier's Tapas Restaurant is going to have its grand opening on May 17th um, at 7 p.m. with ribbon cutting at 8 p.m. So we're finally there. Um, also wanted to let you know at the last, uh, at the April 25th council meeting, uh, investments for the renovation of Sandtown uh, Rec Center additional. We had an initial allocation, but roughly $750,000 has been earmarked for the renovation. I think that's the first renovation of that rec center. Um, as you know, we've already uh, replaced the roof and added HVAC to the gymnasium. Previously, it was not any um, HVAC in the gym. Um, and so we're looking forward to being able to have a ribbon cut and hopefully mid-summer, but the work on that project will begin on May 8th. So next Monday kicks off that project. Um, I know Mr. Davis had sent out that Grady Cascade Outpatient Center is coming to 3355 Cascade Road. Um, that's basically the out parcel in the Kroger Shopping Center on Cascade Road. Um, so that is bringing another health option in the area. On tomorrow, uh, the city of South Fulton has a joint meeting with the city of Atlanta regarding traffic planning for the Audis and the Raw Design Studio that's coming across the street from uh, the Grady Cascade Outpage Center and the Kroger Plaza. So um, the city of Atlanta should begin or we should see some construction on that sometime this summer on this project. Again, there is a um, joint meeting with staff that I will be listening in on, but it's with the planning and the traffic engineers for both cities to make sure that uh, we have something that makes sense at that intersection. Uh, many of you know, uh, our new sanitation program rolls out on June 1st, but the last three weeks I've been including information about that in my newsletter and there was also a town hall meeting that you could attend in person or virtually. I think it answered most people's questions, you know, questions that they had about the program. But if there are any um, additional questions, I'll take them at the end of this conversation. Um, finally, uh, we talk about road improvements. I currently have requested a traffic study um, so that our public works department can look at making some road enhancements and improvements at Riverside Drive and Union Road. Um, as you know, it's very narrow in there with all the development. You've already seen some happen with Carter development. You've seen an additional, the road widening right in front of that facility, but we um, need to 
be more expansive and improve the flow that's coming from Westlake High School is too narrow on both sides of the road. So that study is underway. Um, we'll ask Public Works to bring that back to Sandtown as they move further along in that process. So for a future meeting, um, we'll have Public Works present that information. The city also has a bleacher replacement program across the entire city. So in our parks in Sandtown and Trammell Crow, you should see new bleachers coming online in um, both parks. So uh, stay tuned for that. Me and Councilwoman Gums will be holding a joint town hall meeting um, with the Parks Department to talk about a number of investments that are being made in our park system, um, uh, particularly in districts one and two. And so stay tuned. I'll be sharing that information via my newsletter. And um, one of the things that I also wanted to, um, Lenar Homes project. Um, I think we talked about this a couple of years ago. They're seeking a rezoning. They'll be before city council next week. Um, this is for land that's coming down Riverside Drive where they're looking at um, uh, building single family homes for construction. Um, right now that land is zoned for industrial. And of course we don't want that industrial encroaching upon uh, the park area that we worked on over the last couple of years, as well as, um, you know, coming any further into Sandtown. So um, just wanted to make you aware of that. Um, I'll be sending something about that in the newsletter, but it, the public hearing will be before city council on next week. Um, now, they have already come before us come to the association yes. meeting. Yeah, we've looked at- I just wanted to bring it to your attention because it's been a while. I want to say mm -hmm. the earlier part of the pandemic, it's just been a long time. So mm -hmm. just wanted to make you aware that that was moving forward. And last but not least, um, uh, we have under t Plus sidewalks for New Hope and Danforth Road. I want to bring it to your attention. You're going to see construction during the summer, but uh, no pain, no gain. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, we want to be a walkable community. We're moving in that direction. So I wanted to make you aware, Danforth being the first um, uh, in sidewalks that will be installed and then they'll be coming down Danforth. So that those sidewalks will uh, tie into the sidewalks we have on Camelton Road. So, and last week I sent out the list of all the T-SPLOS projects for the next three years. Um, if you have any questions, um, feel free to ask, but that's kind of the paving schedule and the COVID replacement. We have a lot of projects, capital projects underway in this. And um, I'll open it up for questions. Mr. Lee, you have your hand up. <clears throat> Thanks for the um, update, Dr. Rao. That was very exciting to hear about the sidewalks and all the improvements with the community. I just had a question. Um, I recently, um, I saw it recently on like the corner of Boat Rock and Reynolds Road. I saw the uh, a sign pop up for that land for sale for like 75 acres. But I thought there was a project there already, or, or am I mistaken? Did, did it fall through? Do you have any, any clarity on that? So, so that project is part of Sandtown Center. Um, and, and I'll let Mr. Crawford speak to this, but I'll try to answer it. Um, Sandtown, uh, center was originally supposed to be a mixed-use development that had commercial and residential components. This far outdated me before I, the city was even formed. Um, and all of it had not been built out. So most of what you see that was built was the um, residential component, the townhomes and apartments. Um, and so that land is up for sale. Um, I think Richard Bowers has the listing. Is 75 acres, so it's part of what, what remained from that original project and some land that was owned by, uh, I think, Sherry Finch. Um, and so I think I've covered it, but if Mr. Crawford has anything else to add to it, I guess this, he could share at this point. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rao. No, I, I think you did a great job. Um, we've given a listing to Bowers uh, I've known that firm for a long time. I have a lot of respect for them. 
and uh, they are seeking developers to uh, acquire and build out that project in some fashion. I'm pretty sure it will come back uh, for complete review when the exact uh, components are, are determined. But um, that, that's what's, uh, what's underway right now. And of course, that would be part of the seniors uh, development that's been approved and uh, about permitted, I believe. And that should be that should be going forward here shortly as well. Oh, okay. That, I think that's why I, I thought there was a senior. I wasn't sure, but I thought there was a senior development. So I didn't know if that was kind of falling yep. through, but it's, it's all combined. So that's going to be in addition to the senior development, what you're saying. Correct. That's, that's correct. So as okay, you can see, you. we just have a lot of activity going on. And also, of course, the uh, movie studios are still under construction off of Camp Creek Parkway as you head to Fulton Industrial. And so um, and they're just not, a lot they're of not tell, They're not telling us who it is yet, huh? No, well, I, I will share this. Uh, it's a company that's out of New York. They have, they operate um, multiple stages. Um, because as you know, we're in a market now where everybody does content creation. So from Roku to Netflix. And so they, they lease their spaces for extended period of time for the various uh, production houses. That's kind of how their uh, business model operates. Um, and like I said, I know they're based out of New York. So it's not one like, you know, BET or something like that. This company, they will rent to any of those uh, major production houses uh, to create content, but they provide some, uh, what I guess I'll say support services, technical and otherwise, for those who operate or rent their spaces. Mm. Okay. Cool. Any other questions? Are there any other questions? Yeah. So Dr. Ryan. Well, thank you for that update. Um, is is uh, Councilman Gomes on the line? I can't, I don't think I see her. All righty, I don't think she's on the line. Um, um, I'll also share one more listing, Jess, because sometimes residents know about people who are looking to expand. There's also a listing, a new active listing at Union Road and Camelton Road. Uh, you've probably seen the sign with Steve Langford. That's also a commercial out parcel um, that's in front of the Carter project. So again, um, some of you may have connections or know people who are looking or want to build spaces. I think that's roughly at a little over two acres. So that's another one that you know was recently relisted in our area. So I try to keep up on those as well. Okay. Um, has the intersection down there, Stonewall Tail, has that begun yet? That that has, yes. Okay. They've already started construction on that intersection. I'm super excited. Um, they've taken down the trees. This even the visibility of sight lines are already improved from that. Um, but you'll have that project will be completed before the end of this summer. Mm -hmm. Also, um, I did mention it. I, I need to get back with Public Works and find out a timeline. We also have a traffic light coming at Kimberly Road in Cascade coming out of the promenade office building. That's something that people have asked for for a number of years that is also in progress. That's fabulous. <laughs> Absolutely. That can be bad. <laughs> Very bad. Uh -huh. <laughs> right at the top of that hill. Yeah, that's and, bad. And if, if you didn't know, you know, we have the Healing Garden Community um, Health Center in there now. So if you're looking for a medical home, they have every kind of medical provider in that building right now. It's almost fully occupied by metal, medical practitioners. So if you did not know, um, they moved from West, what used to be in West End, and they're in that space now. So just wanted to make you aware if you're looking for doctors. I know, you know, we keep talking about hospitals, but you also want to have a, a medical home um, with your primary providers. They are new providers in that space. Wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, 
if you all have your phones, if you want to take a picture of all of the information that's in the chat, so you can go to some of these, some of the websites um, that Harvey has listed, um, you can do that. You know, I took a picture of it so that I can go out and take a look. So um, with that, uh, Let me, uh, go ahead. Oh. Uh, Dr. Ralph, let me ask you just one quick question. Uh, some time ago, I think I heard Commissioner Rod Pitts mention when the hospital closed on Boulevard that the next hospital in Fulton County would be in South um, Fulton County. Is that getting any traction? I haven't heard any, to be honest, I haven't heard anything about, I mean, I heard the comment, but there's mm -hmm. nothing thing that I'm aware of or we've seen on the city side about a new facility. Should it be that? Absolutely it should, but I don't know that anything definitive around that. I haven't seen any proposal related to that. Okay. And I don't know if he was talking about the city of South Fulton or Palmetto or Chad who I don't know, but he just said South Fulton County in South right. Fulton somewhere. And if so, and if so, it would likely be, I mean, we probably had the most land. I know there have been previous conversations, but, you know, changes with state law, it's going to be a lot of things that factor into that, so. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. But we are still working in the city of South Wooden to make sure we have access to health care. I mean, we just talked on this phone about two just in District 1, and I do know in District 4, um, think an urgent care facility is coming. So we're working to make sure that we have um, health facilities, health care facilities across this city. Thank you. Are there any other questions or, or anything from anybody? Well, thank you, Councilman Rao, for the update. Marilyn, Harvey, Donald, do you all have any other comments or anything to add? Uh, I've got nothing additional. We've had some pretty comprehensive updates tonight from our elected officials and staff. Absolutely. Marilyn? You on mute? <laughs> You're on mute, Marilyn, but that's okay. <laughs> well, with that, y'all, it is 7.54. I want to thank everybody for joining us uh, tonight, and uh, we've got some wonderful updates. There's a lot of good things happening in our area, and uh, uh, we look forward to seeing you all at the next update um, in June, and with that, um, we hope you have a wonderful week and thanks again for attending. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Good evening. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye.